all right guys so today we'll talk about uh, socket programming using python so what are sockets um, you can look at sockets as just an abstraction over the port uh, that is provided by the operating system now what is a port so port is just uh, a medium to establish endpoint communication between for an application between any two uh, devices now uh, a socket is just an IP address and a port number pair that allows us to connect many applications in the same device with many different uh, other devices in the network. So why do we use sockets? So sockets are just ways to send and receive um, data across the application. Uh, you can just think of it as a a pipe so it's like a it's just like a pipe that connects between a client and the server and allows you to share data and communicate between them so from a socket perspectives there are like uh, four operations that you do uh, you create a socket you read from the socket and you write to the socket and then you close it when your operation is complete let's look into each of these uh, in a little more detail so we'll pick up an example uh, this is using the socket library in python and this is an example of a tcp server using sockets module uh, the first step is to create a socket that supports uh, any reliable communication basically we'll create a tcp socket um, in python we use the width construct to close uh, resources when we exit the block and that's what we'll also be doing here so with socket dot socket uh, socket dot uh, af inet and socket dot sock stream as some variable s uh, the af inet here uh, specifies that we are using ipv4 and not ipv6 and the sock stream specifies a tcp protocol so there is also another uh, um, argument that you can use here which is sock underscore dgram which would uh, allow you to use a udp stream so now for the uh, client part which is pretty much the part of your assignment uh, we first so generally the way sockets work we first create the socket and connect it to the server send some data receive some data so that's what we're going to do here as well so uh, there is all to connect to a server there's always a requirement of an ip address and a port so as we mentioned this is what a socket comprises of um, we start by creating the uh, socket uh, like we did in the previous slide and then we connect it to the uh, appropriate uh, host and port pair uh, using the s dot connect command which you can see down below um, and s dot send all will start sending um, bytes of data across the connection that we have made followed by s dot receive which will receive data the which will receive data from on the socket the 1024 that you see uh, in s dot receives parameters is basically the maximum number of bytes that it can receive for every receive call that it makes also note that uh, the receive call is actually just called once over here but to receive more than 1024 bytes you will have to call it more number of times so uh, it's generally the good case to put it in a while loop and handle the case where uh, you do not uh, you basically do not receive any more bytes uh, the server comes in very similar to the client uh, except that the server also listens to incoming connections and for every uh, client that it is connected to it will create another instance of the socket that it as we know every uh, socket requires an IP address and a port number we will be binding the socket to a specific IP address and port number here as well so uh, we use the socket objects bind method which will uh, bind the host and uh, which will bind the socket to a specific IP address and port. So here host and port is actually a tuple there as you can see. So now that the socket bind is set up uh, we'll start listening on the socket for any incoming connections. So there is this method called socket.listen which will allow you to listen up to any number of uh, simultaneous connections uh, 
uh, we have to pass the number of connections over here um, as a parameter. So as you can see below, um, S dot listen of 10 can listen to at most uh, 10 connections over the socket simultaneously. Uh, now we can start listening to incoming connections and the accept call actually blocks and waits for incoming connections. This returns another socket object when a client connects. The new uh, socket object can be used to co basically control communication with the client. So any uh, send receive that you do with the client uh, has to happen with this new connect uh, new socket object which is CONN in this case. Once that connection is ex uh, established which will happen when uh, the client does an S dot connect on this specific uh, uh, server so on the on the specific socket sorry uh, so with that uh, the connection is established and when it starts sending or receiving data we do the same thing with uh, the server by handling the data appropriately so we just have like a while loop um, and handle the uh, receive uh, the receive for the from the client based on the number of bytes just as we saw on the client side so we can see here the CONN object is used instead of the S object whereas both of them are still sockets. But this CONN uh, specifically mentions that we are using the specific uh, client, so uh, client server pair. And this is uh, pretty much the complete uh, server code that we have. Uh, as you can see here the Port number has to be greater than 1023 because uh, the other ports, the port 1 to 1023 are reserved ports for the system processes like 443 is HTTPS and 80 is HTTP, things like that. So uh, you will not be able to use those ports specifically. Uh, the host uh, 127001 here is just the loopback interface which points to the uh, your local machine itself and this is the entire server code we've just uh, kind of um, stitched together all the above uh, explanations that we have so the send all over here is just an abstraction of send which will handle the uh, buffer appropriately so if you're using a socket.send instead of socket.send all then you'll have to handle the buffer basically to make sure that all the data is sent or not so send all is just an abstraction you can look at it as it automatically handles the size of the data